Welcome to Staying the Course. Join us as we navigate the uncompromised Word of God with Pastor Brett Peterson. I love your word. I love the way. Let's pray, shall we? Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, God, for just all the blessings you've given us. Lord, I know that 2014 has been a year of challenges. Lord, everybody in this room has been under attack and, and has had to face challenges that really tested us. So God, I pray that you would bring us into a season of refreshment and revival. God, I pray that you would anoint your word as it goes forth, that you would speak to each and every person here. In Jesus' name, amen. When we started the church, turn, if you would, to Isaiah 55. You know, God gave me a lot of verses for this morning, and I'm not going to be able to cover them all, but I really felt like if someone's here who had a verse on your heart and you wanted me to talk about that verse, I might or I might not, but know this, God is with you anyway. Does that make sense? I don't know who that's for, but Isaiah 55, verse 1. It says, well, what's that first word? Ho. <laughs> I love it. It's like yeehaw. That, that's the English uh, translation. Yeehaw. I mean, whew. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. And you see, I know that God provides all of our needs according to the riches in heaven. Amen. And he has provided us a place. And I believe a place for refreshment, sustenance, milk, and for joy, wine. And God provides both, doesn't he? You know, this church, when we start, well, a, a, a few announcements. Biblical philosophy next Saturday. See me if you have questions. Thursday night, uh, we are going to finish Ephesians. We're all the way at the end of chapter 6. And then get into the book of Revelation. And that is going to be an incredible interactive study at Pat and Kathy's house. And history of this church. Uh, just to, to remind you, I really believe that today, even though we're in Genesis, it's our first Sunday here, I believe it's monumental. And we need to discuss a little bit. Fall of 2001. By the way, God has always done things in this church in the fall. In fact, every fall, usually mid-October, we have a Vision Sunday. And it just so happened, I looked at last year, we did it in November instead of October. But So it's appropriate that our first Sunday in this place uh, is in the fall. And by the way, we love fall. <laughs> uh, but fall of 2001, I was driving down Antonio Parkway praying past the Water District building. And God said, start a church in there. Start a Bible study in there. And I'm like, what? That's a, the water study? No, no. Uh, it was so strong, I had to turn around, go back. And I said, hey, do you have a place where I could start a Bible study? And the lady said, let me get our facilities uh, manager. And she came out and she goes, well, we have a conference room. And, you know, I was thinking a little conference room, but it was a huge conference room. All of you have been there. In fact, you just had your women's breakfast there not too long ago, and we have our Saturday morning class there. But we officially started September of 2002. Then we moved to Wagon Wheel School. And at Wagon Wheel, it was a blessed time. It was way out there, you know, almost to Cotto, out Oso Parkway. And, uh, I mean, that was an awesome time at Wagon Wheel. Then we moved to Tierras Creek in September of 2007. And the board and... Many of you have been praying for a home for this church. And God has finally provided one here. October 19th, we are going to dedicate this new home to the Lord. Amen? By the way, how do you like it? And what do you think about the chairs? They have lumbar support. And actually, you can lean back and, you know, you almost need a footstool, though. I, that's what I was thinking. If you remember, God told me a couple of years ago that 2014 was going to be the year of faithfulness. Who remembers that? 
Okay, Kevin reminded me, he goes, you better preach on it. And in January of this year, I didn't forget, I did preach. Has God been faithful? Yes. Have you been faithful to God? Yes. Okay, but there's a problem with faithfulness because not only does it involve God's blessing, but it involves the testing of your faith. How many of you have been tested this year? You see, I knew and God told us that 2014 was going to be a difficult year of testing for many people. Do you really trust the Lord? Do you live in such a way that others can trust you? God is always faithful to those who trust Him. I love this in Romans chapter 8, verse 35. And you all know it. I don't need to read it. But God is going to see you through no matter what storm comes your way. He is faithful. He is always faithful. And you can read this later. I mean, what's going to separate you from the love of God? Nothing on earth or in heaven can separate you from the love of God except what? You. You can walk away from God and when you do that, you will not feel the love of God. You will not experience the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Will He let you go? He'll let you go, but I can guarantee He's going to woo you and bring you back. And if need be, He'll bring discipline in your life to bring you back. But one day, I believe, you will come back to the Lord and see Him because He is faithful. God is always faithful. 2 Thessalonians 3.3 3, But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And that's what He wants to do. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 and 24 And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body will be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is He who calls you, and He will do it. And folks, i got to tell you, I don't care how you failed God. He is faithful. He's not going to let you go, and He's going to keep wooing you back to Him until you get right. Amen? He always does that. Sometimes... His timing makes it difficult and we have waited for the Lord in a season of revival and refreshment in this church. Not only was 2014 going to be a year of faithfulness, but the Lord said it's going to be a year of revival as well. Because isn't it true that the more difficult the circumstance in your life, the more desperate you become for God? Psalm 13 one says, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? And many Christians today feel like God is hiding from them. They can't feel Him. They don't feel the joy of the Lord. They get wrapped up in the difficulties and trials that they're facing. And this morning, I believe God wants to bring you out of that into a different season. Habakkuk 1.2 says, How long, O Lord, will I call for help? And you will not hear. I cry out to you, violence, yet you do not save. Lord, I cry out to you, but I can't feel you. When I try to worship, I don't know where you are. I read your word and it's empty. And many Christians find themselves in that space. This morning, God wants to bring a new work in your life. And Pastor Chris read it in Isaiah this morning. A new thing I want to do. I want to bring a river in your desert where you're broken. I want to bring wholeness i want to turn the ashes into beauty in your life psalm 62 1 and 2 says my soul waits in silence for for god only from him is my salvation he only is my rock and my salvation my stronghold and i shall not be greatly shaken in the morning psalm 5 3 oh lord hear my voice are you going to the lord every morning Men at the men's retreat, if you were there, I challenged you to wash your wives with the word. To message them, to text them, to read to them over the phone, or if you can, read directly. And you single guys, I said you need to find a friend to wash in the word every morning. Do your devotions. Get in the word every morning. And when you find a verse that stands out, share it, you husbands, with your wives. 
you single guys with a friend or your girlfriend. And then later, maybe at your break, call them on the phone and pray with them. In the morning, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait in expectation. Do you call that faith? You know, God always comes through. Wouldn't it be something if all of us got into the Word and prayer every day? And we shared it with someone in our lives. I believe it would begin to spark a revival within your heart. For still the vision awaits to its appointed time, Habakkuk 2.3. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. And finally, I believe God is bringing this church into a new place. I love that we're in the upper room. You know, they always met in the upper room. Do you know that? Even at Pentecost, they were in the upper room. I believe there's no accidents with God. In fact, he knew we would be here. I love 1 Chronicles 28, 11. Then David gave to his son Solomon the plan of the porch of the temple. It's buildings. It's storehouses. It's, oh, upper rooms. Mm-hmm. I like it. What else? Mark 14, 15. He himself will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Prepare for us there. And I believe God has given this supernaturally to us. And it's a miracle that we're here. Do you know that? It really is. For a small church to have now a, 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 a location where we can meet, a house of prayer, even though it's temporary, it's a great temporary place. God has blessed us and I Thank you for being a part of it. Yes, today we're about 12 years old as a church. That's about, you know, when little boys become young men. You know, they're reaching that almost teenage time and they're beginning to grow. And he finally moved us here. It's all about the gospel. And I just want to go over our our vision really quick on this first Sunday in our new place. Priority one at Living Water is to cultivate hearts that stand in awe of God. You see, many of you are Christians and you've been Christians for a long time. And you've lost that sense of wonder about God. I believe God is looking for a people that every time they part the pages of this book, they're in awe that the God of the universe wrote this to them. That the God of the universe loves you and desires a relationship with you. We should stand in awe of God. We believe in missions and evangelism and reaching out. That is why we're here. It's not to build a social club. It's to go out and reach the lost with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's to proclaim the gospel every time we get together. November 2nd. Uh, We're going to have a preacher from Ireland uh, preach here. And uh, I'm excited about that. But, you know, he started and Joe supported him and and pretty much got his church going through uh, stuff. But he's going to come and share what God is doing there and a message that God has on his heart. But we need to go out and reach the least, the last, and the lost with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Are you amazed by God? Or are you bored with God? Do you stand in awe when you come to church? By the way, this is a sanctuary now. This is God's house. Do you know that? Talking about Bethel, I know we're the house of God, and I know the church is us, not a building. But I also know this. When you have a room dedicated to be God's house, I can tell you every morning, 7 o'clock, we're going to be up here praying, praying over each seat praying for all of you. That's the beauty about a small church. I can pray for (laughs) y'all every day, several times a day. Pastor Chris and I will be here. We'll have times of prayer and communion. How cool is that? When we have prayer meetings, again, getting on our knees on these at least comfortable chairs, You know, it won't be so bad. And hopefully we'll have tear stains on a lot of these 
chairs as we come before the Lord in prayer. God wants to do an incredible work in our midst. We exist to make God famous. We stole that from the church in Ireland. In fact, the pastor that's coming, PJ, uh, that was their church motto, but Cheryl and I liked it so much <laughs> that uh, we just did it. And to proclaim the gospel to a lost and hurting world. We need to be a lighthouse. They started in 2000. Yeah. A hotel, yeah. Yep. Amen. Thank you, Joe. That's a good testimony. And this church and Bible college has been a part of supporting all of that. So you guys kind of knew that, some of you. If you remember, this is what God showed me some time ago. Uh, actually, a couple of years ago. 2013 would be a year for obedience. 2014 would be a year for faithfulness. Next year, God showed me, will be a year for perseverance. Lord, I don't want to persevere trials. So perseverance in cheerfully enduring the things that are going to come on this world. And we don't know what's going to come. But we do know this. Perseverance means cheerful endurance. It does not mean, woe is me. You know, man, I got to hang my head and, and be low. But faithfulness. God totally said 2014 would be a year of faithfulness. We went over this vision last year that I see a church that literally becomes the spotless bride of Christ, ready for His return. I see a church functioning perfectly, as the body of Christ in complete unity and power. I see a church declaring boldly the gospel, a light to the world, inviting our friends, co-workers, neighbors, everybody in the highways and byways to come to the Lord, to come to church, to come to the cross. I see a church uncompromised in doctrine. And folks, that's going to be hard to find in the days ahead. I see a church that corrects false doctrine. I see a church that reaches out to the lost sheep. That is not self-focused, but other-focused. What God showed us for this year is that this body needed unity. And I got to tell you, God has answered that prayer. Because our church body right now is the most united body I have ever been a part of. I have never seen a church with such great love for one another as what's happening in this church right now. God has answered that prayer. Do you know that? Mm. Pam had a vision about fake armor and real armor. I believe we are getting armored up with the real thing. See, trial does that to you. 2014 has been a year of testing. If you haven't been tested, you probably will. And it's through the fire of testing that the caliber of man or woman that you are and the faith that you have in God is revealed. You see, yes, the Bible says that our faith is purified by fire as with gold. So the fire that you go through, the trials that you have faced this year, and I know you have faced many, has done nothing but hopefully increased your faith. And made you stronger in the Lord with real armor. This is what I taught in January. I said, get ready. And this is quote unquote, 2014 will be a year for testing your faith. Did that come true? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it did. We need to be ready to endure to the end. Trust the enemy will try to divide churches and families. 
truly love one another. Did that come true? Yeah, it actually showed me that in last November. Support. We need to support one another and communicate with one another and be faithful to God and others and watch for God's faithfulness to living water. Everything God has been showing us has come exactly true this year. I cannot wait for what's going to happen in the months and years ahead should the Lord tarry. I believe God has some incredible, amazing, amazing things. We'll be a church that teaches the Word of God, all Scripture. You know, just the essentials, and I've, I've shared this so many times, but I'll share it again. People say, you know what, we just focus on the essentials, and we don't want, you know, to get into the other. And I say, please show me in here what's non-essential. So I can rip it out and never study it again and waste my time. You see, the whole thing is essential. The whole thing is God's word given to us for a purpose. We're accountable to the truth to be watchmen. In Acts 20, 26, Paul said, Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all of you, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. I believe this church is doing just that. Is a Bible-believing, teaching church. Some have labeled me a biblicist. Uh, you all are probably biblicists as well. That's worth worse than a, a fundamentalist. <laughs> you see, because a fundamentalist, well, you know, hey, it's all Bible. But a biblicist says, you know what? I believe everything written in here, and it's still applicable to the church today. In fact, who am I to say, uh, oh, that whole chapter, it's not for us. Oh, those two verses in the middle of this chapter, oh, it doesn't apply to us. You see, I believe it all applies. Either it all applies or it doesn't. So we will be a church dedicated to the Word of God. I can assure you that. And those pastors in Texas that had their sermons subpoenaed and you know, they're, they're still fighting that. I pray for them. Pray for them. You see, because I believe in the months, maybe years ahead, people that teach the whole counsel of God's word, oh, they're going to be in trouble. They're going to be in trouble. But as for us, we will teach the full counsel of God's word. One of our theme verses is 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. You see, there's a quote by a guy named Edmund and he said, if good men stand by and do nothing, evil will prevail. If the church stands by and does nothing, I can assure you the culture will prevail and the church will begin to look more like culture rather than shedding light to the culture. We need to look more like the body of Christ. In fact, the church is, in this verse, the pillar and support of truth this church will be a church that does that the church is us not a building aren't you glad about that Ephesians chapter 2 it says man you're no longer strangers or aliens but you're of God's household having been built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets Christ Jesus being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple of the Lord, in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of God in the Holy Spirit. We are the church. But this building has now become our sanctuary. And folks, as a sanctuary, I know in the school I could be somewhat flippant at times because even though it's where we met as a church, it didn't feel like this is our sanctuary. Does that make sense? A sanctuary is a place to come for peace in the midst of a storm, for prayer. We're going to have this place open for prayer and for peace, to get away from the cares of the world. Escape persecution. Jesus said, remember when he ran the uh, Pharisees out of the temple with his whip and the court? at the temple they were doing business and he said my father said my father's house shall be what house of prayer 
house of prayer. This is holy ground. I almost, on the picture down there, instead of enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, I almost said, take off your feet for this is holy ground, but that could be stinky. And then we would have real pews. No, never mind. Yeah, take off your shoes, not your feet. (laughs) Exactly. Right, I did. (laughs) Carlos? Hey. Our first official Sunday up here is going to be the Sunday before Thanksgiving. How appropriate that Thanksgiving Sunday we give thanks here. This is just kind of dress rehearsal. (laughs) Um, Of course, anyway. (sighs) Living Water needs to be a church that equips, encourages, enables, energizes, extends. It's an example of what a true biblical church should be. And when we started this church, it's like, you know what? We're not going to model any denomination. We're not going to model or become a part of any denomination. Lord, show us what a real bride of Christ, functioning body of Christ looks like in your word. And let us emulate that. We are trying to be a biblical church. Not influenced by man, but simply God. We can be effective without a church home, but folks, I got to tell you, we can be more effective now that we have a home. You see, without a church home, you're kind of a wanderer. Now that we have a home, we're established. Does that make sense? Now, this officially is still Saddleback Resources. Uh, What that means is this is not a church and it's not a church building, but this meeting space right here is our sanctuary. Does that make sense? Matthew 25, 23 says, His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You are faithful in a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Enter the joy of my master. You see, I believe for me, it is my goal to preach the word in such a way That when the rapture occurs, we don't shrink back in, wow, I should have done more. Wow, how did I fail you, God? But we look each other in the eye as we're standing there. The rapture occurred and we're like, yes, we did it. Victorious. We finished well. We ran the race. Well done, good and faithful servant. That is really why we exist as a church. I believe God's going to do amazing things in our church. And I know I'm skipping things, but I've got about still five minutes because I do want to end about the same time we used to end. I know some of you were nervous about that. Now, Pastor Brett, we have our own building. He's going to preach till like 1.30 and we're going to be here. Well, especially today, this is just kind of family talking about our new home. Does that make sense? This church has sent people all over. We are ascending church. I pray we continue to be ascending church. One problem with sending is you lose people. <laughs> Sometimes you got to boot them out. <laughs> okay, get out. Any of you have uh, teenagers still? Li- I mean, uh, people still living in your house, parents? You want to get out? You know, you're just waiting for the day. You know, get a job. Get, you know, it's time to move on. you know i am not one of those parents and neither is cheryl because we have told cody we hope you live at home with us the rest of your life right So this morning, God really wants, and you remember this sermon, 10% of your time, talent, treasure, temple, your body, and testimony. That's minimum. 
You see, when you're doing that, that's when God opens the floodgates of heaven and blesses you. Does that make sense? We're told in Scripture to test the God, test God in what? Giving of our tithes and offerings. Yeah, just that. There's nothing else we can test God with but the giving of our tithes and offerings to the Lord. And when we build God's house before our own, guess what? The floodgates of heaven open and he meets our needs supernaturally. Supernaturally. Are you giving God 10% of your time? Think about it. That's in service or in prayer or in study of the word. Just 10%. What if every day you took 10% of your time and spent that time in prayer, in the word, or calling people in this church? How you doing? Hey, can I pray for you? What's going on in your life? If we all did 10% of our time each day for that, would that make an impact? That would be huge. That would be such an amazing thing. God hasn't called us to simply try to few seats. He's called us to make disciples. God hasn't called us to a broad and easy path. He's called us to a narrow path wrought with challenges, but that leads to righteousness. God hasn't called us to please man. He's called us to proclaim the truth boldly. God hasn't called us to mediocrity. He's called us to holiness and to be examples. This church is a unique church. Most of you in this room realize that. That's why you're here. People that don't realize that have a hard time with this church. But I do know this. God has a plan for this church. And you're all leaders. And you're all precious in the sight of God. God hasn't called us to allow compromise, but called us to demand holiness. God's given us a vision to be a biblical church, to correct false teaching, to equip members for ministry, and to go out and preach the gospel to a lost and hurting world. God's called us to prepare the bride, not to play the harlot. And folks, many churches today have prostituted themselves out for compromise. We won't be a church like that. It's time to raise the bar. Step up and be the church God's called us to be. He's given us a new place. He's given us great vision to do great things. And I believe each and every one of you are here for a purpose. And it's no accident you're here this morning. Living water. Hebrews 12.1, this is a verse that God really put on my heart for you this morning. Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside the encumbrance, the weights of sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. As a church body, do you personally commit to this that you're going to run the race that you're going to lay aside those weights that have held you down and kept you from what God is really trying to do in your life you see God has great things for your life greater things you can imagine sometimes we just got to get rid of the garbage of the world so that we can truly effectively run and run we will Having fixed our eyes on Jesus. On who? Jesus. Not a building. Not a person. Not anything else. But Jesus Christ. The head of the church. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. That's what communion is all about. That's what we had this morning. I just want to end with a couple of verses. Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing, church. 
Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I need that. I need that peace. I need my mind guarded by the Lord and my heart, my emotions guarded by the Lord. This morning, Jesus is saying to you, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You need rest. You need refreshment. You need revival. Come to the Lord. Oh, come to the Lord. What's that song, Jake, we sing? Come to the fountain. Come to the river. Oh, yeah. Come to the well. Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. Yeah, that song was playing in my head. Maybe we, well, anyway. It's such a great song. Man, come to the well. Come to the, the well. From my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I'm gentle and humble of heart and you will find rest for your souls. The Lord Jesus Christ wants to give us that. I believe he's going to bring this church into a season of revival and refreshment. I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to the Lord this morning. Amen. Comforts me, strengthens and restores my soul, satisfies my need. Thank you for listening to Staying the Course with Pastor Brett Peterson. If you would like a copy of this message or would like to submit a prayer request or comment, Contact us at 949-888-5777 or email us at info at ccbcu.edu. God bless you as you seek and serve him. Remember, stay the course, and we'll see you next week. I love your word. I love Satisfies my need